by fellow Americans. As the host of Three Sheets, it is my patriotic duty to remind you that the official distilled beverage of these United States is bourbon. In keeping with this long-standing American tradition, it is my honor to serve as your leader on a mission into the bourbon belt. Okay? Do it. Every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe, getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. <laughs> Warning, when you go drinking in some parts of Kentucky, bring cash. What do you want me to do, put my $20 in the hole? No, you, you. Put my 20 bucks in the hole? Hey, oh, yeah, the hole, the hole. I'll explain that later, but first. The Bourbon Belt. Champagne gets its name from a region in France. Tequila takes its name from a region in Mexico. And bourbon gets its name from a small county in Kentucky. Today, the bourbon making business has outgrown the county, but the vast majority of it still resides in the great state of Kentucky. But why Kentucky? What makes this place so key to making this stuff? I'll sip with some southern gentlemen to find out. That is nice. I'll hang with the owners and patrons of one of Louisville's finest bourbon bistros. And once I've experienced Kentucky's upper crust... It's very exciting. Very exciting television. I'll go native to explore the lesser-known aspects of Kentucky drinking. Good God, I'm getting accosted. From the mysterious... to the out-and-out -out secretive... These bikers gave me the recipe, mm -hmm. and they made me promise I would never tell anybody. This homegrown drinking excursion is likely to be as foreign as any experience I've had abroad. Welcome, oh, Jesse. Oh, yeah. And you know that guy I'm always telling you about? Hey, my friend Steve likes mushrooms. You should meet my friend Steve. Steve McKenna! I wonder if he'll come along for the ride. Everything is good. Everything is good. Anything could happen when I go... My bourbon excursion begins in Louisville at a place called Bourbon's Bistro. This place is a bourbon lover's paradise. They carry over 130 different bourbons. And the owners, Jason and John, fully endorse each and every one of them. No bad bourbons? It's only better bourbon. It's only better. I might, I might steal that, make it my own. Take it. You know what I say? There's no bad bourbons, just better, better bourbons. These guys have agreed to give me a crash course in all things bourbon. All bourbon is whiskey, all whiskey is not bourbon. Huh, so all bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon. I think it's time to put the professor in the hot seat and drill him about this. Ready, professor? Ready, Zane. Okay, first off, define whiskey. Whiskey is distilled from a fermented mash of grains, which may include malt, barley, wheat, rye, and corn. So what makes bourbon different from Irish, Scotch, and Canadian whiskey? Irish whiskey comes from 100% malted barley. Scotch whiskey is malted barley that's been roasted over peat-driven smoke. Canadian whiskey is a blend of grains. And bourbon is a blend of grains that must contain a minimum of 51% corn. What about Tennessee whiskey, Professor? Oh, yes. That's the same as bourbon, except that it's filtered through charcoal, which changes the flavor profile of the beverage. Okay, what about the barrels used for aging whiskey? Bourbon must be aged in new, charred white oak barrels. Same goes for Tennessee whiskey. As for Irish, Scotch, and Canadian whiskeys, they are often aged in used bourbon barrels. Wow. All right. Professor, you got it. Now I got it. Bourbon is whiskey, but whiskey is not always bourbon. 
John. True or false? No, it's true. Now that the knowledge is flowing, the drinks are also flowing. I'm having the this Weller Centennial on the rock. You know what I'm having? I'm having this stuff. So this is the legendary Pappy Van Winkle here. Why am I a Pappy Van Winkle guy? Because I hung out with the Van Winkles. So this was your great-grandfather. My grandfather. Your grandfather, President your great-grandfather. Right. The Van Winkles carry on a family tradition of patience. All their bourbons are aged for a minimum of 10 years. And in Kentucky, that's a long time. One thing about aging whiskey in Kentucky, very hot and very cold. Okay. Today it's 20 degrees outside. Yes, in the summer yes. it'll be over 100 sometimes. Uh -huh. So what that does, you get a lot of expansion and contraction in the wood. We're talking about Scotland, not that big a temperature variation. Right. So it's roughly four or five years of, um, uh, of scotch whiskey aging equals one Kentucky season, so oh, to speak. So a 30-year-old scotch, it might be comparable to a, you know, a five or eight-year-old bourbon. In base, so the, the bourbon ages quicker. Enough talk. Time to taste some of this rapid-aged bourbon. The Van Winkles have lined up three choices for me. Starting with what is old by most standards, but young by Van Winkle standards. Okay, that's the 15-year-old Pappy Van Winkle Stanley Reserve. Okay. Uh, that's 107 proof. You'll notice definitely some caramel and vanilla. That comes from the grain and from the barrel. There's a lot of sugar in the wood. And those flavors are imparted into the whiskey. Ooh. Wow. That is a tasty bourbon. Next up, it only gets better with age, the award-winning 20-year-old. That whiskey was rated at one point by the Beverage Tasting Institute of Chicago, got a 99 out of 100. The highest whiskey rating they'd ever given any whiskey. That is tasty. Finally, the grandpappy of the pappies, the 23-year-old. There's <laughs> only one request. Neat or on, on the rocks? Don't please, right. please don't mix it with any of your foo foo cranberry. We'll save that for something stuff. else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can use the other guys for that, <laughs> and you know who we're talking about. <laughs> mm. That is nice. Yeah. This is the world's finest bourbon. I said it, so you guys didn't have to. Thank Julian, you, Julian Van Winkle. Glad you like it. Van Winkle. It. Thank you. Appreciate let's it. Go, let's go. Let's go kill this bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I got the drink with the real live Van Winkles. Cool. Mm, that's good Van Winkle. And it's just as good back at Bourbon's Bistro. Whoa, hey. Jason and John have created something special here. A swanky bistro with top tier food. This food is delicious, it's amazing. And if you come to Louisville, you have to come to Bourbon's. Wow. A great selection of bourbon and a relaxed, fun atmosphere. Can I get a bourbon on the rock? <laughs> yes, you can. It's times like this, I wish my old drinking buddy Steve McKenna was right here next to me. Hey, um, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm in, uh, I'm in Kentucky and I'm shooting three sheets and I think you should get on a plane and come here because we just started shooting the show. What? Just come on. Well, you can be you can be in the show. Everyone in the show wants to know what you look like. They've heard so many stories that they, they don't know who you are. <laughs> I, I tell you what. I will pay for the the flight, pick you up at the airport, take care of everything. You have to come down here. What are you talking about? You, you come down. I'll see you here tomorrow. I hung up on him. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Stay tuned. Coming up, will Steve McKenna actually show up? It's very exciting. It's very exciting television. Plus, our cameras take you to the dark side of distillation. When I woke up this morning, I looked at my phone and I had a text message from Steve McKenna saying that he was at New York's LaGuardia Airport boarding a plane bound for Louisville. Louisville. If you're a regular viewer of the show, then you know I'm always talking about my friend Steve. Steve McKenna. <laughs> he's the guy. He's had a bit of a drinking problem. Yeah. Who's Steve McKenna? Yeah. Who is it? It's yeah. you, baby. Oh. Hi, 
Steve. Yeah. How's it going, man? Hello, how nice are you? Nice to meet you. Uh-huh, yeah, hey. May I kiss you? Ah, yeah. oh, my goodness! Enough talking about Steve. Time to meet him. Steve McKenna. Yeah. Do you, you've seen the show before? Yeah. What's, tell me, tell me what it's about. Some asshole going around getting shit everywhere. Man, does Steve know how to press my buttons? This is a show about interesting people, interesting places. This is a shopping, shopping center. Shopping center, yes. And interesting yeah. customs. Just go right hand. Okay, always right hand. Set amidst the backdrop of fine and sometimes exotic libations. It's got a fing beetle in it. I just think it's very educational. <laughs> Documentary. Brilliant. What the heck? Are you drunk right now? <laughs> Not yet. Oh, man. <laughs> Enough talk about my show. Let's talk about my friend, Steve. In real life, he owns a country store. But not just any country store. Bird's Country Store. A place that you own yes. up in uh, upstate New York. Yes. I sell more beer than any store within 250 square miles. This is Steve McKenna. And here at Bird's Country Store, we sell more beer than anyone for 250 square miles. So the next time you want to get Steve McKenna, Come here for all your beer and meet me, Steve McKenna. Located just up 87 North at exit 34 in Keysville, New York. And remember, always drink responsibly. Okay, anyway, back to the mission at hand. We're headed to Nelson County, Kentucky to visit the legendary Sherwood Inn. This place has been in your family since 18... 1875. This living, functioning, historical landmark of sorts is frequented by a colorful cast of local characters that truly define the region. <laughs> like Popcorn, the Spoons guy. Popcorn? Hi, Popcorn. A dude I'm calling Uncle Jesse. And a band of friendly musicians. And as strange as we Yanks may seem to them, Steve and I are made to feel right at home, matching t-shirts and all. <laughs> Steve McKenna. Steve McKenna. Steve McKenna. To be inebriated to the point where one loses control of their actions, examples may include drunk dialing, drunk dialing, no restraint over bodily functions, streaking, etc. Uh, example. Sorry, I hit on your mom last night. I was Steve McKenna. So, will someone lose control of their actions? Hallelujah! Streak? Or hit on someone's mom? That's why I was asking. Is your mom fine? Steve and I are older, wiser, and too mature for that stuff. Steve McKenna. At least I hope we are. Do you have any idea what you've got myself into? <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Tonight could get interesting. But first, time to show you why I brought my old pal Steve to the heart of bourbon country. So, am I interrupting your, your beard right now? Are you ready? I need to cleanse my palate. I line up six different types of whiskey and Steve does the customary three sheets, three S test. See, sniff, and sip. Then he tells me what's what. Irish whiskey. Canadian whiskey. That's easy. Wild turkey. Uh, I won't forget that one. JMB Scotch whiskey. It's gotta be this one. You're, you're impressing our viewers. All right. Jack Daniels. Ah, uh, right here. <laughs> Henry Steve McKenna. Hallelujah! Kill it, kill it, baby. Uh, six for six. That's why he is Steve McKenna, and you will never be. In honor of Steve's superhuman powers of deduction, I think it's time to invent a new drink on his behalf. 
We're doing Irish Americans. Oh. Budweiser, bourbon, and a little Irish cream liqueur. Three, two, one, go. Here at the Sherwood, drop. There you go, drop. Our new drink is a hit. Got you. Oh, welcome, Jesse. I'm not Boss Hog. You don't hate me. That's a good drink. After inventing a new drink, everything is good. Everything is good. Everything is good. I get to talking to the boss's daughter about a very old drink. What's the deal with uh, moonshine? Why would someone buy moonshine instead of buying whiskey? Well, when moonshine was first made during Prohibition, it's like my mom and my dad, my mom, her daddy made moonshine and yeah. he sold it to feed his family. Today, there are still people who make moonshine. Want to see? I think it's time for an adventure with the gutsy, hard-hitting, three sheets investigators. Moonshine, hooch, white lightning, whatever you call it, you're talking about hard alcohol made by rogue drink makers who do not follow production and distribution regulations. In fact, our crew, who you see on camera right here, was not allowed to record the drive out to ensure that there be no photographic evidence of this location. The people who brought them here also refused to appear on camera, but they did agree to describe the still. The first ballot is your batch. Okay, and that's like a, um, a mix of corn. Corn, barley, and malt. malt. Basically, moonshiners heat a mash of fermented grain and water. The alcohol cooks off, and condenses into the next barrel, mixing with another mash mixture, creating a more concentrated alcohol. The process repeats itself from barrel to barrel until out comes moonshine. Of course, there's no moonshine coming out of this final barrel because the people who brought us here refused to make it on camera. Once again, it's that whole photographic evidence thing. It should also be noted that mixing an open flame with moonshine is highly explosive and dangerous. So seriously, don't try this at home. Ah While the moonshiners keep their secrets up in the hills, the bartenders at the Sherwood Inn have some less controversial secrets. It's called an apple pie, and she's not telling us the, the, the ingredients of it yet. Actually, she's never going to tell us the ingredients. Tell me why I can't tell my viewers what's in there. Because these bikers gave me the recipe, mm -hmm. and they made me promise I would never tell anybody. Okay. okay. Coming up, is this so-called mystery drink all it's cracked up to be? Whoa. Then, after a late night, can Steve and I find some comfort in a little comfort food? You know what a snort is? I think it's something that comes out of someone's nose. No. <laughs> the Sherwood Inn in Kentucky. <laughs> Betty the bartender is serving a mystery drink called an apple pie. All she tells us is that it's a hard alcohol based drink which includes a secret mix of apple-y flavors that mask the taste of alcohol. To all, to all my good friends, this is to Steve McKenna. Whoa. I'll tell you what, you, that, that, that might be the best shot I've ever had. So good, in fact, that I think it's time for a Team Three Sheets taste test. You know what, Curtis? You need to do a shot of this. Come here. Ready? One, two, three, do it! Fantastic. That literally tastes like an apple pie. There you have it, an apple pie in a glass. And unfortunately, you're probably never going to know how to make one. Oh well, they have their local secrets, and I have my Hollywood secrets. Including these cool fake whiskey bottles. Yahoo! 
fake bar fights are fun, but apparently Uncle Jesse ain't too happy about the mess. Somebody's gotta clean this damn mess up. Looks like that somebody is Steve. Right under the road with you, pal. Yeah, real fun. This is great. We soon learned from Popcorn that out here, you don't need a dustpan. Oh, down the hole. Yes, sir. Down the hole. I am Popcorn. I'm putting it in the hole. According to Popcorn, this sweet pole also doubles as a sort of a wishing well. Right. That pit pulls it on in the hole, dude. Popcorn, tell me to put it in the hole. Pulls on in the hole, dude. Put my 20 bucks in the hole? Hey, oh, yeah. Put it in the hole. Put it all in. All I have is my credit card. Now I've got it now. After donating to the Sherwood Hole of Fortune, the party kicks into high gear. The local band is strumming, and the patrons are having a blast. It's been an unforgettable night at the Sherwood. Hallelujah! Steve and I couldn't have asked for a better reunion. To Steve McCann. Of course, funny thing when old college friends get back together, they sometimes revert back to their old ways. I know I'm too old for this, but come on, you saw the t-shirt. Examples may include streaking, etc. You've heard the Steve McKenna stories. One time I took my friend Steve and I, I tied him down like this, and I had the, the faucet dripping on his head, and it made a hole in his forehead. Surely you must have expected something like this to happen. Of course, one thing Steve and I did not expect, that cold Kentucky night air. Let's just say the turtles stayed in their shells. <laughs> On that regrettable note, I think it's time Steve and I cut ourselves off and call it a night. Yep, our heads are pounding, and we've returned to the scene of the crime for some southern comfort food. What's wrong, buddy? <coughs> Nothing. How do you feel? I feel good. Did your head hurt? Mm-hmm. Does that hurt? Mm-hmm. You know you might be hungover. <coughs> to D. McKenna Steve, they bring us a classic country breakfast. Sausage, eggs, and biscuits. That is a real biscuit right there. Fluffy, hard. All at once. Along with Steve's heavenly biscuit comes a little something extra. Snort your coffee. What, a snort? A little snort. You know what a snort is? I think it's something comes out of someone's nose. No. <laughs> it comes out of a bottle. No cream, no sugar, just black coffee and whiskey. No, here, fill his up to the rim. Why do they call it a snort? What's up with the monkey? What? What's up with the monkey in the glass? What do you mean? That's Cleopleus. Just like you're in every episode? So it's Cleef mm. Me and the monkey. And you know why I have him? So I never have to drink alone. Time to go. You got a, you got a train to catch? Yep. Go, 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 go! Oh, oh, not good. What? Having a hangover and running, and running after a train. <laughs> wow, what an adventure. When's the next train? Huh. From sipping fine bourbon with real life Ben Winkles. Hmm, that's good Ben Winkle. To a desperate chase after a train bound for who knows where. Now I'm definitely gonna throw up. <laughs> it's been great. And even better, I convinced the one and only Steve McKenna to come along for the ride. Hallelujah! Kill it, kill it, baby. We drank, we danced, we did chores. Somebody's gotta clean this damn mess up. And nobody ran us out of town. Hey, now! They even let us back in the next day. I'm still McKenna. Oh, that's good TV. Were you a little Steve McKenna last night? A little bit? Now that's Southern hospitality. 
How are you, sir? Kentucky, a great place to get Steve McKenna. <laughs> Breathe deep. The gathering gloom. Watch lights fade from every room. Pensative people look back and lament. Come to find out you can't get a hangover from bourbon. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Cold-hearted orb, it rules the night, removes the colors from our sight. I like that. I like that. <laughs> My boy's got talent. <laughs> 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 <laughs>